welcome back. Now that we have our orthographic reference material and our frame helpers in place, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. So up to our layers, create, and this one I'm going to call fuselage. It's checked, so anything we create now is going to be stored within that layer. Now we have an important decision to make. What form of geometry are we going to use to begin creating our model? Well, we could start with a basic box or rectangle. It's fairly standard, easy to manipulate and it produces relatively clean geometry. And now that we have our frame helpers in place, we can easily determine the profile along the entire fuselage. Yes, there are distinct advantages with this piece of geometry. Or we could use a plane. Used by many modelers, it is a slow progressive way of extruding and positioning vertices and edges to various points of references. why not use a spline? We're already familiar with them. We could of course create our initial profile and apply an extrude modifier and then we could convert it to a poly. After that we can easily modify the geometry to the profile of the fuselage with our move and scale tools. Something to be considered. Now, there is no set rule for the type of geometry that we begin modelling with. It's something which comes with experience. Now, I'm sure that you've noticed that I tend to do a lot of preparatory work when considering a model, and I do like my workflow to be well organised and ordered. Plan your work, work your plan. But, don't be afraid to explore, to push at the boundaries, because the worst thing you could ever do is not to learn from your mistakes. And whilst experience tells me that these three options are valid, nevertheless, this model is best served if our first piece of geometry is to be a cylinder. But first I'm going to select our front viewport, so I'll hit the F key, let's zoom in pull that down, then I'm going up to our layers manager, into our frame helpers and I just want to hide the fuselage sections, um, I want to keep E, so hide A, B, C, D, G, F, lovely. Close that, select cylinder, move it into the center, left click with the mouse and drag it out. Somewhere about there. Let go of the left mouse button and then I'm pushing the cursor backwards just for a little bit and then left click again. So it's a two stroke action. We drag it out first of all and then we push it back. Okay, so down to our parameters now. I'm going to turn off smooth. Sides I want as 20. Height segments I'm going to take down to just the one. And then whilst it's like that, I will come on convert it to an editable poly, go into the editable poly there, select polygon, click on that polygon and press delete and then there's a black one, click on that one and press delete again and it looks as though it's disappeared but don't worry. In fact now 
I think I'll hide our reference material completely. Just close that down for a moment. And if we move over here to our vertices now, we can see a ring of blue dots or blue squares. I'm just going to pop up to the editable poly section here and move this bounding box up to about there. So it's encircling this here. Now if we go back to vertices we can see that we've positioned them within this area here. Next I'm going to just go out of the box here and left click and select all of those vertices that now turned red. Pop up to our scale and now I can actually scale those inwards and what I want to do is just get them so that they more or less line up with this profile here. Now I can see it's not really centered so just pop up to select our move tool and let's move them over a little bit about there then select our scale tool again this is just a little bit of faffing around to begin with once we get these done now I can pop down here and we have a soft selection if we open this up and I say use soft selection fall off about 20 if I now just select a couple of these you can see that they change color um, it's going from red orange through to yellow green and then blue well if we select our scale tool again and I now start scaling what's happening is it's scaling from the top outwards by varying degrees so if I select the bottom ones now the emphasis has shifted from the top to the bottom so if I now pull this out I can begin to shape and modify this with a little bit more accuracy let's increase that that bit there then this bit here we can adjust the fall off here so moving it down and you'll notice it goes paler and darker so when I move that in it's affecting those closer to the top than it is to the bottom let's try that and as you can see we are slowly getting there the other way of course is to actually use our move tool turn off soft selection grab that and move it into position making sure let me just undo that and there's a reason best explained now we have two vertices the front and the back and what I did then was I grabbed the back uh, the front one instead of both so if we're doing that pull our box across we've selected both then and then just move that in do the same on the other side here it's a little bit more work but it does the job let's just move that one across so what we're doing now is lining up these vertices to our profile so there is various ways that we can do it using the soft selection let's just move that down to there that one to there
you in for time on one of those. Okay, and let's turn that there. And if we pop into our left viewport, let's go zoom and pop up and turn on our references again. Close that. Zoom out a little bit. Bring it across. And there we have the beginning of our profile, which let's just go Alt X to make it a little bit more or reduce its opacity. Zoom in a little bit. And let's just move this across a little bit more. About there. Now, what I want to do is actually put on the vertices. Just select all of those. What I'm going to do is drag it across to there. And whilst those are selected, I'm going to go back into the front view. Let's pull that down. And whilst it's like that, zoom in a little bit more. We're going to grab our scale. And we're going to select this section here in the middle. And we're going to scale this down. And then, with our move, we're going to bring it up. Then with our scale again, I'm just going to hit the R key here. Let's scale that out there. And just up a little bit there. So we're following that profile in the back. And as time is pressing, we'll continue this in the next tutorial. I'll catch you then.